I'm just getting out of bed. I just got out of bed this very second. I've been up for a few hours. Um, went to bed at 5.30. Slept for a couple hours and I've been up ever since. trying to breathe. My lungs feel like lead. Every, every time I exhale, I feel like the life is draining out of me. You know what? I know that I'm dying and You know, I lay down at night and my, you know what, <laughs> there's always like, you know, 20 things on my mind. I'm always thinking, you know, when I'm gone, I... How to get the message out? You know what? I'm too sleep deprived to to get my story across to tell my story. When I lay down at night, when I laid down last night, when I you know shut my phone off and close my eyes and my you know what my my chest is in crisis my heart lungs it's like something's f fluttering something's doing something wrong something's going wrong it's not anxiety you know i think the mind is a powerful thing and people can be delusional and talk themselves into things and you know, probably manifest things at times, but you know what? A healthy body is going to eventually just crash and sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep. Doesn't matter how delusional you are or you're making up 40 diseases and you're convinced you have all these diseases your mind and body is going to crash and you're going to sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep unless something is seriously wrong I remember 17 years ago me saying to this psychiatrist something is wrong when I'm asleep I'm scared to go to sleep something's happening to me something very wrong is happening to me when I'm asleep and I didn't have the language for it back then but I was just being completely gaslighted and I knew something terrible was happening. I had had severe insomnia already for many, many years, 17 years ago. I had been suffering just terribly and I, I was as clear as day saying to this doctor and to the family doctor, Something is very wrong when I'm asleep. I'm scared to sleep. Something bad is happening to me when I'm asleep. And it's not dreams. It's not nightmares. Something's wrong with me. And I knew they couldn't see or think beyond what they were capable of. I didn't have the language for gaslighting. I was... I'm being gaslighted into my grave. 
I knew something very terrible was happening. I've known all these years something really bad is happening to me. And it's been like a silent scream for 20 years. And it still is. The desperation, the, this is the big one. This is the big thing. The desperation, the suffering, the suffering getting escalated to the point of torture and trying to get my message across without being further harmed by the medical community. That's what it's all been about. Trying to get medical help without getting harmed by the medical community. Because they will deny you your complex medical issues and they will threaten to lock you up. And that's what's happened to me. I lay down on my side and my chest is in crisis. It feels like my heart and lungs are in crisis. Something's wrong. This needs to be monitored. 17 years ago, I was saying, and I didn't know sleep doctors existed or, or sleep labs existed. I said, someone needs to watch me when I was, I was sleeping. Something's wrong. That and that it's bizarre and and that whatever's going wrong something's malfunctioning and my diaphragm as well that creates anxiety and panic Anxiety is the first tip-off that something's wrong in your body. And unfortunately, they, they don't see that as a symptom. They, they will say that that's what's wrong with you. That that's the actual diagnosis and you're making up diseases. It's, it's incompetence. It's, it's just a failure to to recognize, it's an unwillingness to, to recognize, you know, rare con conditions. I have two rare diseases. I, I'm in shock. My body, it takes hours to recover every day to what's happening to me all night long. It takes me hours. So just now, before I got out of bed, I laid on my back for 10 minutes because I'm trying to think what's going wrong with me when I'm on my back something's wrong with my lungs when I'm on my back it's like my lungs are are collapsing and often if I roll over onto my back my oxygen just starts to drop so what is that what the hell is that why don't I have doctors to talk to? The the uh, the respirologist is trying to tell me that that is sleep apnea. That's not even sound, reasonable advice. That makes no sense. That's not true at all. That's gaslighting is what that is. I roll over on my back and my lungs feel like they're caving in and collapsing. I can't lay on my back and it puts me into medical distress. I'm I'm still trying to recover from laying on my my back for 10 minutes. They're lying to me. They're you know, I get out of bed and my oxygen's dropping. The 
respirologist is trying to tell me that's because I have sleep apnea. That makes no sense. That That's not even, that makes no scientific sense. My life is completely gone, except I can walk to the store and back. My life is completely gone. I have no quality of life. I have no quality of life. And I'm reaching out and begging and screaming for help. And I have to do that with trepidation and precariously because people call crisis because, you know, they'll threaten me again or they'll, they'll do what they have to do to shut me up. And this is like diabolical. This is what it's like to have rare diseases in Canada and not get not be provided proper medical care. And I can appreciate that we just may not have the knowledge here and the specialists and stuff. I can appreciate that they have not hired the specialists to deal with this. And that I've I've I could accept that if they could tell me that tell me the truth. We can't help you, but but we'll help you remain comfortable in your home until you can't do it anymore. So we'll provide you with home care or someone to help you in your in your house, someone to help you come and get you and take you to medical appointments when you're too weak and ill. I can appreciate that, but they won't even do that. It's It has to all be gaslighting the line. And threatening, threatening a sick patient, that is, that is mental illness. That's diabolical. I'm losing my life here, you know. You know how family gets gaslighted, like 15, 20 years ago. It, it doesn't matter if it was 20 years ago or yesterday. This is how it works. And the medical community knows this. And, and they have records of wh who you have for support. And if your family is supporting you, they have this written down. Because most doctors will ask you this and they will write it down. This is how families are gaslighted. And when you don't have a strong family, you're screwed. The family will ask, well, you know, 20 years ago, a year ago, the family will ask, well, well, what, what do the doctors say? Well, the doctors don't believe it's happening. That's it. Then the family is gaslighted. That's how easy it is to gaslight a family that's dysfunctional, that's not a strong family, that's not, you know, lacks critical thinking skills. I have no history of lying and making up illnesses. None whatsoever. But that's how easily gaslighted a, a dysfunctional family is. That can't think their way through things. It was my birthday a few days ago. And that almost, you know, it was so hard to have fam no family, to have nobody that cared about me. Not one person. How bizarre. But I know I'm trapped in something terrible, and I've known that for years. I know. I know I'm, I'm losing my life. That was a hard, hard birthday. I'm amazed I've lived this long. I never thought I would live this long. I never thought I would see this birthday. And my mother sends a card that I, I wish I had it with me. Just happy birthday. Hope you're doing okay. Which to me, it's just so bizarre. It's so bizarre that I can't get through to these people. And I think there's family members that have worked hard to work on my mom to make her not believe that I'm sick. And I can't respond to that. 
I can't respond to my mom. I can't play the game and pretend that nothing's wrong here. I can't even fathom how you can just send a card to your child who's dying and you say happy birthday. Uh, I hope you're doing okay. I love you. I can't respond to that. That's gaslighting. That's so screwed up. And you know what? I love her and I appreciate her and I appreciate the card. It's wrong for me to respond like nothing's wrong. It's wrong for me to say, oh, thank you. I have nothing to do with any of them. I'm uh, nothing. No phone calls, no emails, nothing. It's wrong to respond for me to respond to that like nothing's happening because I'm, I'm, I'm playing, feeding into the, the unspeakable gaslighting or the delusion. It's, it, these people are so delusional. I need help. I need support. I need people in real life. I am 100% isolated. I need help. I need physical help in my home. I need company. I need someone to talk to in real life. I need to go for a walk with somebody. I've literally not gone anywhere or done anything in years because I can't get medical care. I am dying here and being gaslighted literally into my grave and reaching out for help. I've got a, an advocate in another province and I don't know what they're doing and I don't know if they're, if they can help me. They're watching my story. I'm so confused by all of this. I don't understand. I'm suffering every day I wake up. I've just ran a marathon. I never ever wake refreshed. When I go to bed, I'm taking away from my life. It's this is harming me. Laying down and sleeping is killing me. And I can't sleep upright. It's the same thing. Something's happening to me. It's so insane. It's like, it's like silent and being gaslighted into my grave. I'm dying and I'm, I'm being gaslighted to death. What's it all about? Is it all about not wanting to take responsibility? Is it simply not having the specialists and the quality of care here. So let's just do this to her, pretend that she's okay, just gaslight her to death? Is that what it's all about? To not medically take responsibility because Canada won't hire the specialists? Is that what it's about? I don't fully understand what's happening. Just simply not having the specialist, but being afraid to tell patients that? What's happening here? 